A very good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime TV on TV1. I'm Michaela Fernando. Before we head into more news in detail, here's a look at headlines. Supreme Court determination on the state land special provisions bill to the parliament. Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna forms an alliance with several other political parties. A shootout at the Yala Forest Reserve. One person injured. 16 U.S. Marines arrested for their alleged involvement in illegal activities. The Supreme Court has determined the State Land Special Provisions Bill is a subject which comes under the purview of the Provincial Councils and before it is included into the parliamentary agenda, approval must be sought from the respective Provincial Councils. The determination was made by Deputy Speaker Ananda Kumarasiri in Parliament today. In more local news, the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, together with several other parties, formed an alliance today. The respective agreement was signed at the opposition leader's official residence in Vijayarama. The signing of the agreement was led by opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksa following religious observances. The Maobi Majanata Party of Hema Kumara Nanayakara, the Lanka Workers United Front of S. Sabathiran, the Tamil United Freedom Front of Vinayagamurthy Muralidharan, the Ilavar Democratic Party of Mohammed Abdul Majid, the Liberal Party of Kamal Nisankar, the Navasihalurumaya of Sarat Manamendra, the Democratic National Movement of Anuradi Zoiza, the Exat Lanka Mahasabhava, the Muslim Ulama Party, and the Bhumi Putra Party formed an alliance with Podujana Piramuna. <laughs> We have a responsibility to defeat this government for the sake of this country and its future generations. The present government has destroyed the country. They have sold the country. They sold the port and instead of settling the debt, they wasted the money. No one knows what happened to these funds. Ranil Vikram Singer is so crafty that he sold the port through a member of the SLFP. Arjuna Ranatunga refused to sign the agreement. However, he got the next minister to sign it. So this shows how crafty he is. There were several hidden agendas behind the introduction of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. However, this has become an issue to the UNP now. Now they are trying to outforward the 20th Amendment to the Constitution. This government has no right to make further amendments. This government is now trying to fool the general public and come back to power once again. <laughs> In more local news, a journalist questioned SLFP MP Tilanga Sumantipala about the discussion between the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna and Sri Lanka Freedom Party on forming an alliance yesterday. The discussions will continue. We have come to an agreement on the main factors of important policies for both the parties. We will take those discussions forward. Not yet. SLFP have requested to nominate President Maitripala Sirisena. He has not decided whether to contest or not. We have come to an agreement to work together. Based on the current situation, there are factors that President Maitripala Sirisena and Mahindra Rajapaksa should think. The final agreement should be reached by both of them as the leaders of these two main parties. If they complete their responsibilities, we can move forward with forming the alliance. Journalists raised questions regarding the presidential candidacy of the United National Party during a media briefing at Sirikota. We will put forward a candidate from the UNP who is capable of winning. We do not have to rush to announce the candidate. We will put forward a leader along with a set of policies that can change the current political setup in the country. We are not prepared to fall into difficulty by putting forward a common candidate. We will put forward a member of the UNP and we will win the elections. If a common candidate is put forward, he will be from the UNP. In some tragic local news, an individual has been murdered in Galevela. 
The victim was a 60-year-old resident of Ratotomathale who was also employed at the Kalevela Urban Council and worked as a labourer in the Kalevela area. The victim was murdered while he was asleep at the Kalevela bus stand around 2 a.m. early this morning. The Kalevela police are conducting further investigations into the incident. Due to the non-completion of a drinking water project, locals in Potuhara are facing several difficulties due to the lack of clean drinking water. 80 families residing in Potuhara Lihinigiriya and Murakale Vatta fulfill their drinking water requirements from this project. However, today these people are compelled to walk several miles to obtain water. Locals are suffering without water. We have to walk very far to bring water. Drinking water is obtained through water bowsers. The contractor of the respective water project had completed the project at a cost of 1.5 million rupees. The contractor had closed the well with waste material. No one was aware of this. For the past four years, locals had consumed water from this well. The villagers request for the completion of this water project that would provide them with clean water for consumption. Still in your local news, the body of an elephant calf was found near the Navodagama tank in Tantirimale, Anuradhapura. Our correspondent said that the elephant calf was five months old and had died nearly three days ago. Locals claim the elephant calf was shot to death. They also added that the calf had been ill for several days. Officials of the wildlife office in Tantirimale had examined the remains of the wild elephant calf. The gum at the door-to-door -door team visited the locals residing in the Kuda Oya village in Norelia. Gum at the Gain Getter. The houses of nearly 400 families and the anicut that supplies water for their cultivation are located on a high land. However, it's been years since this anicut was in a functional condition, hindering the cultivation activities in this village. Locals are currently exploited due to the intervention of intermediary forces. While a cost of 70 rupees per kilo is incurred to cultivate their crops, these farmers are compelled to sell their products for a cost of nearly 20 rupees. Due to this unfortunate series of events, the gum at the team witnessed how the farmers allowed their crops to rot. When our team visited Polo Narua, we came to know about the Halmilava village, known for its density of kidney patients. Locals in this village, a majority who are kidney patients, are compelled to pay high prices to obtain clean drinking water. Cultivation in this area is devastated due to the dry weather conditions. Come at the gain getter. Taking a look back at some local news, making a special statement in Parliament, Minister of Finance Mangala Samravira said that instructions have been given to lawyers to determine if criminal charges can be filed against importing foreign garbage into the country. The minister said that the usual procedure of charging a fine thrice of the value will not be sufficient as a punishment for this offence. Speaking further, the minister said that 964,000 kilograms of waste material have been brought to the country and that it violates the Basel Convention. He added that the waste material will be re-exported while implementing the law against those who are responsible. The minister said that a court order has been given to retain the garbage at the Haley's premises. In some sports news, the first one-day one international match between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh will take place in Colombo today. The occasion will be special for cricketing fans around the world as Sri Lankan legend Lasit Malinga will be retiring from one-day internationals following today's encounter. The three-match series between the two sides will commence at the R. Premadasa Cricket Stadium in Colombo today. Sri Lanka and Bangladesh have played in 45 encounters commencing from 1986 in which Sri Lanka have emerged victorious in 37 matches, while Bangladesh have won seven. Three matches ended without a result. The two sides lost played in a one-day international in 2018, in which Bangladesh beat the Lankans by 137 runs. The occasion also marks as the first instance where the two sides will be meeting at the venue. Lasit Malinga, who will be retiring from one-day internationals following today's encounter, has captured 335 wickets in 225 one-day international matches. He has also captured 24 wickets in 14 matches at an average of 17.04 against Bangladesh. 
The match is scheduled to start at 2.30 p.m. local time. And that is a wrap of lunchtime news. For all these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsfirst.lk. Have a good day.